first method that we're gonna do that we start with in the beginning of the year is called hide zero. So that's when you're adding anything to a number that ends in zero. For instance, if you were adding 10 plus seven, you'd look at it stacked on top of each other then, 10 plus seven, and pretend if the zero's not there, then instead you pretend it's not there and just drag it down. So then it's easy to see why it becomes 10 plus seven, because you're looking at the ones place value and this seven is also in the ones place value. Since it's zero, pretend it's not there. That's why we hide it and we replace it with the other number. The next method is the number bond way. So that's where you start the biggest number on the top and then you need to break it down into two numbers where these two numbers that you end with should add up to the bigger number. So let's just go with 10 and five because I know 10 and five is 15. But let's say I don't know this other number and it's missing, so I need to solve for it. You could do it two ways. You could say 10 plus what will get me to 15 and then count on and try and find the missing number. Or you can start with the bigger number and say 15 minus 10 because I know that one's 10 equals what? And then they will both end up being five so that's why you could do it either way to fill in the missing number of the number bond or opposite. If you don't know the top one, you could say these two, I know that they're both my parts because they're the smaller ones on the bottom. So if I add the littler ones, then they'll get me to the bigger number on top. The next one that we're gonna do is the tape diagram. Just like how in number bond, we had the bigger number on top was our whole, and then the little two were our parts. If I have a number bond, or sorry, a tape diagram, I'm going to have a whole and some parts. And you need to base it off of the word problem and decide what am I trying to find. So maybe there's someone who has 30 pieces of candy and all. So we know that total, they have 30 pieces. Maybe let's say bananas instead. We have 30 bananas and all. And then they give away 15 bananas and then they want to know how many bananas do they still have you could look at it again where what I started with the biggest number is my whole and then if I have some that I gave away how can I find the missing number a lot of students will want to add them together but they have to remember that when I have a whole and two parts my whole is always bigger so if they know that the two parts have to be smaller, they know that if I want to add these, or maybe you test it out, say add those two together. And then what they should get is a bigger number. And then you'll ask, can my littler part be bigger than my whole? So that's how we know to find the missing one. You have to take the whole minus the part and subtract to get the missing number. So they know that you can't have the other part be bigger than the whole. The next method is the arrow way. In order to do the arrow method, you need to know benchmarks. Benchmarks are anything that when I count by tens, I can get to that number. So whether it be 10, 20, 30, 40, up to 100 or 200, they all end in zero. So we'll get to it at some point by counting by tens. So I'm gonna show you how to do it with subtraction. So that means we want to start with our smallest number, 89, and we're going to see how many times I have to move to get to 123. So I look at 89 and I say my next, my first benchmark after 89 would be 90. And then I think, how many did I need to add to get from 89 to 90? If I count on, it'd be 89, 90. I only needed to add one. And then my next benchmark would be 100. So I draw an arrow. Every time you draw an arrow, that's when you, are, you will add for this one or subtract with whichever way you're doing it. And then we would get to 100. And then how many did I need to add? I needed to add 10 to get there. And then my goal is to end at 123. So I just can't pass that. So then if you want to skip one of the 10s, you can say my next benchmark from 100 could be to 120 because it still will be a multiple of 10. If I know to get from 100 to 120, I have to add two tens, which is then 20. 
but I can't stop yet because my goal is to end at 123. So now it won't be a benchmark because I'm looking to end at my answer, but it will still be either between one and nine or a multiple of 10. So how many do I need to add to get to 123? Because that's a very close number and then we'd say I need to add 30. And then now you take all of the numbers that you added and circled at the top and add them together. So now I'll do 10 plus 20 plus one plus three, we can simplify that to four right away. And then I'll do 10 plus 20 plus four is 30. And then the four, so 34 would be my answer to solve 123 minus 89. Another method is expanded form. That's where you need to look at the problem and then each number individually and see what the number in the place value is actually worth. So I look at my one and try and find what does that actually mean. The one is in the hundreds place value, so that's actually worth 100. The two in 123 is in the tens place value. So I have two tens, 10, 20. So the two is actually worth 20. My three is in my ones place value, so that one is actually only worth three. 87, my eight is in the tens place value, so eight tens is worth 80. The seven is in the ones place value, so that's worth just seven. And then the last number, 22, there's a two first in the tens place value, so two tens is 20. And then two also in the ones place value, so just worth two that time. And then now we're going to add what comes easiest first. So I'm going to look at how many hundreds are there. There's only 100. So that one will stay. And then I'll look at all of my tens that are in the tens place value. So I have 20 plus 80. So I know that two tens and eight tens are easier to add by ones. So if I do eight plus two, I can do eight and count on nine, 10, but 10 tens. What we've been working on a lot is that 10 tens is actually worth the same as 100. And then I'm not done yet with my numbers that end in a zero for the tens. So I now still have 20 to add in. And then I wanna see if there's any ones that I can add together to make a 10 as well. So then I look and I have three and seven. If I start at seven and count on from three, with three more, I have eight, nine, 10. So that one will be an easier one to add on as well. But I can't forget, I still have a two over here. So now I'm going to condense a little more. So now I know 100 plus 100, I look at my hundreds place value, the one and the one will bring me to 200. And then I look at all of my ones that are worth the tens place value. Two plus one is worth three. So then that's actually worth 30 because there's two tens and one 10. And then I still have my two to add on. And now I can condense it to the simplest form. I have a two in the hundreds, three in the tens, and two in the ones. So I have 232, squish it together. So it's 232. The next way that I want to teach you about is called the place value chart. So that's where you'll break it apart and you'll have different place values. The first one over here will be our hundreds. Next, we'll have our tens place value and our ones. So then I need to break each number apart. So 163, I wanna say how many hundreds are there? And then I would draw one hundred. How many tens are in 163? There's six tens in there. One, two, three, four, five, six. And how many ones? There are then three ones. And then now I need to do the same for the next number, 29. So there's two tens in 29. And nine ones. One, two, three. try and keep it in rows of five because that's how a tens frame works where there's five on the top row and ten on the bottom so then it's easier to see how many more I need to get to that ten. So now when I'm adding I want to add them all up. I want to 
see how many do I have. But just like how in the last one, I mentioned that we know that 10 tens is worth 100. We also know, or have been working really hard on understanding that there are 10 ones in one 10. So my first thing to look for is, are there enough ones to bundle up and group together to exchange for a 10? So I know that there's already nine here. So then I want to count until I get to 10 so that then I can switch them over. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I need to borrow one from up here and I'll switch them for one ten. And now looking at my ones place value, these ones are no longer here because I switched them. So now there's only two ones left. And then looking at my tens place value, if I have enough tens to exchange it for a hundred, because we know 10 tens is worth 100, then I will. If not, then we'll just leave it here if it's less than 10. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We only have nine tens. And then looking how many hundreds are there total, there is one. So now I condense it and put it all together. We have 192. And we could check to make sure this is right with the vertical way. So that's why we really teach the place value chart first because that explains to us how vertical way is possible. So for 163 plus 29, I start at my ones first, and I always know start at the ones. So I do three plus nine, which we would say is 12, but in 12, 12 is actually worth 110 and two ones. And knowing that it's one ten and two ones, I can only keep the ones in my place ones place value, and this one ten has to then be added to my tens column. So now I have one plus six plus two, which would get me to nine, and my one hundred then goes straight down. 